I know you want to invest in SpaceX. I want to invest in SpaceX too. But SpaceX is not a public company. The only way to invest in SpaceX is if you are an accredited investor or if you know somebody who knows Elon. And I don't know anybody who knows Elon. And because you're watching this video, I assume you don't either. So what is our next best option? What is that stock that can give us SpaceX-like exposure? And the answer is Rocket Lab. I have been following Rocket Lab for a long time. Pre-IPO, it was one of those companies that caught my eye when I was trying to find something to get into the space sector. I've always been very bullish about space, and I really do believe that that is a new industry in a nascent stage right now. It is just starting off, it's the first innings of that industry. It very recently started commercializing, and there is a long way for it to grow. Rocket Lab is widely known as a space launch company, but more than half of its revenue actually comes from a space systems business, the business that builds satellites and other space systems for other people. Rocket Lab aspires to be an end-to-end -end space company, which means that if you want to launch a satellite into space and you reach out to Rocket Lab, not only will they build it, but they will launch the satellite and help you get access to how to use that satellite in orbit. You can literally go to Rocket Lab's website right now, fill up a form and sign up for a satellite launch. The shortest time that Rocket Lab has launched a satellite from contract to launch is eight weeks. Yes, eight weeks. That is how quickly they can launch a rocket. Before I share more about Rocket Lab, I also want to point out that this is not a recommendation. I'm just sharing my research of what I'm doing with Rocket Lab. If you want to invest in Rocket Lab, I would request you to please do your own due diligence before investing in this stock. Rocket Lab is a leader in small rocket launches. It counts both government agencies and commercial businesses as its clients, as well as it continues to work with NASA and the Department of Defense. Rocket Lab's business is also going gangbusters. This year, so far, Rocket Lab has signed 17 contracts totaling $141 million. It is the third most frequently launched rocket globally in 2024. It was fourth previously. A 100% increase in launch rate in the first half of 2024 as compared to the second half of 2023. Electron has accounted for 64% of all non-SpaceX orbital US launches in 2024 so far. Now let's take a deeper look into the launch business by looking at how Electron is doing. As mentioned earlier, it is the undisputed leader in small rocket launches. Rocket Lab also continues to scale the Electron rocket very quickly. If you look at this chart, you will see that Rocket Lab has reached 50 launches faster than any commercially developed rocket in history and is on track for fastest 200 as well. Launching with Electron gives the customer the ability to launch the satellite in a very specific orbit. This is something that Rocket Lab has proven to do extremely, extremely well when it delivered Electron within 8 meters of the target. Industry margin for deployment is typically 15 kilometers. This makes Rocket Lab the preferred vendor for clients who want to deploy the satellites in a very specific orbit. Now let's talk about Neutron, something that everybody is really excited about and something that I have been really looking out for. A lot of people are frustrated with why investors are paying so much attention to Rocket Lab's launch business, even though it makes most of its revenue from the space systems business. The reason for that is because of Neutron. Rocket Lab announced Neutron and set itself as a competitor with SpaceX. The promise is Neutron. So you better deliver that. Once you have the vehicle to get into orbit, you can do all sorts of things, but you have to first get that vehicle. And Rocket Lab promised that vehicle just around the time it came public. So it got mixed with the Rocket Lab story. And Rocket Lab, you know, as Peter Beck himself said, you know, having Rocket in the name does not help. But, you know, it's just people just think Rocket Lab is a launch company, which is really, it's not. It's an end to end space company that makes space more accessible. As far as rocket development timelines go, Neutron seems to be doing quite well. It's been 4.3 years since Peter Beck announced Neutron, and that is still below most other rockets that we can see on this chart. Electron is an outlier. They got the rocket flying within 2.8 years, but you know, Neutron being a far more complicated, completely reusable rocket, it's going to be a lot more difficult to make that. But as you can see that, you know, Neutron is still performing better than Falcon 9 and New Glenn, etc., which have taken a lot longer to be developed. The hot test fire, which I'm just going to talk about in a minute, 
has been successful, which means that we will see Neutron have a test flight sometime, hopefully this year, which also means that, you know, if things go well, they could actually be successful and approved by the end of this year, or it might go into 2025, but it doesn't look that far away. It does look like we'll see a lot more action from Neutron going forward. In terms of development status, uh, Rocket Lab has continuously been posting pictures of the development on their social media. So you will see various pictures come out about pieces of the rocket itself. So here you can see the fairing that they are showing, uh, and a few other parts is there, as well as infrastructure where they're building uh, the launch pad itself. They also built a robot that builds, that basically 3D prints the outer shell of the rocket itself. So that is pretty cool. So they're, they're doing various things to automate things and move things fast and building infrastructure to get to a place where they can start doing flight tests. As far as Archimedes engine is concerned, the testing recently concluded with the engine firing 102% throttle, which means that the engine is ready to go. The next engine is already coming off the production line and the next five engines are already being built. This means that Rocket Lab is rapidly expanding its engine manufacturing to build more rockets and get them flying as soon as possible. Once Neutron is certified, Rocket Lab will start delivering cargo as well as humans to space. As I mentioned, the space systems business is the largest part of Rocket Lab's business. If you want to be an end-to-end -end space company, it's very important that you solve all pieces of the puzzle. You have to solve for the entire pipeline, and that is what Rocket Lab is doing. As you can see, it has more than 720 million in contract value of satellites in development, production, and operation. And you can also see that these clients are from varied backgrounds, being NASA, as well as from WADA, which is a private company, as well as Globestar, which is a public company, as well as space Force, which is a government contract. Rocket Lab recently announced that it completed the manufacturing of twin satellites for NASA's Mars mission. This news caught a little bit of fire. A lot of people believe that the most recent rally in the stock has come because of this news. I happen to believe that that rally came out of the fact that Peter Beck mentioned something about Rocket Lab building its own constellation. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. With the Mars satellites, Rocket Lab again shows that how fast and how quick it is at delivering its work. It designed built and tested the two satellites in just three years from contract award. These two Mars satellites are scheduled to launch on Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket before the Mars transit window closes later this year. A lot of people would not beg Rocket Lab to be a chips company, but Rocket Lab manufactures solar panels to be used in space arrays. And these are as good as microchips, which is why Rocket Lab recently received $49.4 million as part of the CHIPS Act. These funds would help Rocket Lab further expand their presence in Albuquerque and increase manufacturing capacity of space-grade solar cells. Rocket Lab has also been part of WADA Space's mission where they are trying to manufacture pharmaceuticals in space. Space manufacturing is a very interesting space and there is a company that I like about that and I'll make a video about that in the future. But there is a lot of different products that are better manufactured in zero gravity. A few examples that I can give you is uh, some fiber optics are better manufactured in space. At the same time, 3D manufacturing human organs is better done in space. The reason for that is when they try to 3D manufacture human organs, they tend to sit down because of the weight of the gravity. But when doing it in space, there is no gravity. So it's able to build the natural volume that any given organ needs, which is why space manufacturing is going to continue to grow into a big business and we will manufacture things in space and bring it back down to Earth because some of those things will be that valuable. Warda Space is trying to manufacture pharmaceuticals in space and Rocket Lab is their launch partner in this venture. Rocket Lab has also been selected by multiple companies that are building constellations. With a small rocket launch, it is possible for these companies to launch the satellites in a precise orbit, which is something these constellations really need. They have a contract with Scorpius for $515 million. They also have a contract with Thunder worth $143 million. So we spoke about how Rocket Lab is a rocket launch company and also a space systems company. And its goal is to be an end-to-end -end space company. In the most recent earnings report, this slide caught my attention. As you can see that Rocket Lab has listed three different parts of its business. We've already spoken about the launch business as well as the space systems business. But Rocket Lab is now pointing at something which is called the space data and services business. So let's talk about this. As far as the rockets are concerned, you need something to get satellites into orbit. Rocket Lab has that figured out with Electron and Neutron is going to come online soon. 
The next is the spacecraft. Rocket Lab has that covered with their space systems business. They build spacecraft for a lot of different companies. They can build spacecraft for themselves too. And now Rocket Lab is trying to get into this new space, which is the space data and services business. The reason I'm excited about this business is because as far as the rocket business and the space systems business are concerned, they are relatively lower margin businesses. But once you get into the data and services side of the business, you could charge a much higher margin. So it sounds like Rocket Lab is going in that direction. Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck also mentioned during the earnings call that Rocket Lab is now planning to build its own constellation. He said that Rocket Lab is in a better place to do something like this given its end-to-end -end space business where they can build the satellites themselves, launch it themselves and they don't have to wait in queue to be able to get launch services or the satellites from anyone. Not much has been shared about Rocket Lab's own constellation, but I believe it would be a B2B kind of constellation where it does multiple things at once. So it could be a communication satellite as well as an Earth observation satellite. As I mentioned earlier, Rocket Lab's business is doing extremely, extremely well. In the most recent quarter, they made $106 million revenue, which is the highest quarterly revenue till date. That revenue was also a 15% increase quarter over quarter and a 71% increase year over year. The backlog has grown to $1,067 million as of Q2 2024. As you can see here, for the most recent quarter, 76.9 million of the revenue came from space systems business, whereas only 29.4 million came from the launch business. Having said that, as I mentioned earlier, the launch business is the enabler for the space systems business. They both work hand in hand. Rocket Lab would not be such a formidable company and an end-to-end -end space company if it didn't have one or the other. It's very important to have both, which is why Neutron Promise is so important. So that is it. That is my favorite investment in space. As I said, I can't invest in SpaceX today and the next best option is Rocket Lab. There is a near 100x arbitrage between SpaceX's valuation and Rocket Lab's valuation. While that arbitrage is justified in some ways given that SpaceX has developed far bigger rockets and already has Starlink in operation, I think Rocket Lab is also going in that same direction and I'm trying to get in early just waiting for it to play out. I am extremely bullish on the future of space. Space was on pause for multiple decades. Only recently commercial space companies have started doing business and only in the last decade have some companies come public. It is a great time to start buying into these companies as there is a very long runway ahead of them. I really believe that while humans were born on Earth, they are not meant to stay on Earth. Our place is in the stars. And as humans start going and doing more deep space missions, companies like Rocket Lab will become essential to the space economy. This is an opportunity to get into an early multi-bagger which could become a 10x or even a 100x stock looking 30 years out. Rocket Lab is a long-term hold for me and it is one of the largest investments in my account. If you like this kind of financial content, please like and subscribe. You will see more videos in your feed more often.